As someone who peruses the news on a daily basis, I'm beginning to think I need a day purely for court cases. Instead of Judge Judy, maybe we could go for something plucky like Detective Dom. But I digress, let's talk about the story at hand. So, for those who don't know, Mr. Matthew Storman is the owner of a particular rum site known as Rum Universe. And in the summer of 2020, our friend Matthew got hit by the Nintendo Bat, and his site was batted out of existence. And Rum Universe, in no other simple terms, was basically a ROM distributing site. If you wanted a Nintendo game, you could bet your bottom dollar that they would most likely have it. And the site would work in the following way. You'd sign up, and you were allowed to download one file per week, unless you were a Platinum member. For $30 a month, you could then download as many games as you wanted from the site. Now, I'm pretty sure, even to the legal layman, a lot of you are going, hmm, this does look like a pretty cut and dry case. However, what made this court case a little bit different was the fact that our dear friend Matt decided to represent himself. Oh no. Yes, as you can probably imagine, it went as well as you thought. In stormed the Nintendo Ninja solicitors, stating, This is a straightforward video game piracy case, and the material facts are undisputed. For over a decade, defendant Matthew Storman owned and operated the website ROMUniverse.com. He populated the website with pirated copies of thousands of different Nintendo games and distributed hundreds of thousands of copies of those pirated games. And our friend Matthew was only being sued for a meager $15 million in damages. So Matt decided to represent himself, as we previously mentioned, and he argued that he indeed didn't break any laws and the case should be dismissed. He said that ROM Universe wasn't responsible for pirating Nintendo games as he'd never uploaded a ROM himself. However, poor Matthew did slip on a bit of a proverbial banana, as in the previous deposition, he admitted that was exactly what he was doing. As you can imagine, the judge didn't agree with anything that he had said, stating, Defendant filed a declaration in opposition to the motion wherein he declares and that he denies and disputes that he uploaded any files to said website, and at no time did he verify the content of said ROM, which is in direct contradiction to his sworn in deposition testimony wherein he testified that he uploaded the ROM files onto his website. So, as you can imagine, his testimony went down like a big lead balloon. For all those wondering how much the website actually made, it was between thirty and $36,000, and in 2020 it was making about 800 a month before the website got closed down. Now, Nintendo were looking for around $15 million in damages, so our judgy friend didn't actually award $15 million worth of damages, it only came to two point one. So breaking that down, that's $1.7 in statutory damages under the Copyright Act and $400,000 under the Lanham Act. And I say only like it's nothing, $2 million worth of damages is still a ridiculous amount of money to be fined with, considering he was only making $36,000 a year. So there you have it, no real happy endings to this story. Um, I will say... Instead of going, hey guys, like and subscribe this video, because I think that's what everyone says, I will say, if you have any stories you would like me to cover, then please, please, please drop them my way. I would love to look at some more bits and pieces and cover more. But in the meantime, everyone stay healthy, stay safe, get your jabs, and I'll speak to you relatively soon.